Uh, hello everyone, uh, I hope you can uh, hear so well. Um, it's an honor to be presenting today at the first conference uh, 2021. Um, so as uh, Shin said, I'm a cyber defense operation manager, but I joined uh, first uh, ANT as a operational situation awareness analyst. And uh, so I will be presenting, co-presenting today with, uh, with Lena. Yeah, hello everyone. So I'm uh, still a situation awareness analyst and I've been at ANT for uh, more than two years now, working at, as that, uh, in that position. Uh, we are both very excited about uh, presenting today about integration of an operational situation awareness team to a CSER, and we are going to uh, more precisely uh, develop the need for specific missions when scaling up, when getting more major. Uh, so what is uh, operational situation awareness analyst, um, one might wonder, and I'm going to let Lena um, develop that point. Um, so yes, thank you, Esther. Uh, let's start with the, the core of our presentation, what we're going to talk about, uh, which is operational situation awareness. Um, in this presentation, we'll talk about it as both a mission and a team. And as a mission, we define it as the, the fact as, as being able to give a synthetic and analytic picture at any given time. Uh, of any incident response activity. Uh, you'll see in the, the presentation that in practice, uh, it takes uh, really different formats and um, it is used for very diverse uh, and a large panel of uh, incident response activities. Uh, what we want to show you uh, today is how it works, uh, how useful it is for a national and governmental sectors as a set of friends, uh, but we also hope that you'll see how it can be applied to any other incident response team, both from the private and the public sectors uh, as well. Uh, for our team, uh, well, it was created in 2017, um, and at the time, Esther will dive a little bit more into it afterwards, uh, Set friends was reorganizing all of its operational teams and activities. Um, so today we're gonna we're gonna tackle three main points. Uh, first, uh, where does the need for creating the team come from? Uh, what it is four years later, uh, meaning what we do on a daily basis, uh, who we interact with, um, and what we do within an incident response team. And finally, uh, the challenges we face uh, building this team and are still facing sometimes. And also we start with uh, the but where does it come from? What does that need come from? And the origin of our of our situation awareness. Yes. Uh, so first thing first, uh, let's get started with the, the when, the how, and the why was created. Uh, so in order to do that, as Lena told you, um, I have to take you back to uh, year um, two thousand and seventeen when uh, the year went out, France was reorganizing its operational teams. At that time, uh, situation awareness already existed, uh, but in a different format, in a less developed form in comparison with the current one, as it was partially assigned to a team which main mission was cyber threat intelligence. Uh, now, two important reasons of creating a specific team and integrating it uh, to incident response teams are that First of all, uh, situation awareness was mainly used for major incidents, and at the time it was more a uh, situation report mission than an analysis. Therefore, the associated deliverable were longer and looked more like a situation playbook, uh, which was sufficient to fill the reorganization. Uh, at the time, South France was getting more mature and the volume of operational, of its operational activity was increasing. Um, a major incident made it clear that there was a need for easily accessible analysis of a given situation that would serve um, decision making for South France leaders and a group. Um, it also rapidly turned out that this need for clarity and synthetic vision was not limited to such major incidents, but also for the whole incident response chain. Second of all, the cyber threat 
situation, uh, the cyber threat intelligence situation team was separated de facto uh, from the incident response uh, technical team. And given this separation, uh, situation awareness was uh, de facto scattered among that team and technical experts on the other side were facing time consuming solicitation from the management. Uh, so therefore, uh, <clears throat> it was decided to create uh, a team uh, that was uh, fully integrated within the incident response team, um, to include um, uh, technical experts, teams in charge of triage, etc., that would be able to take charge of operational uh, situation awareness for both the all incident response activities and for major uh, incidents. And it was also uh, decided to couple this, um, to couple the situation awareness analysis mission with another one, which is operational activity regulation. So you understand uh, why, uh, why uh, just after I get you through a little bit about what is operational activities regulation. Um, okay, so actually this activity was a brand new mission when it was created in 2017. Um, the mission and the objective of this of this new uh, this, of this new team is to control the proper and the good running uh, of the incident response team. Uh, interestingly, until 2019, uh, it was done by operational uh, situation analysts on the best effort mode, and since then, the team has been uh, fully staffed. Uh, so, how do they um, do they complete this mission? Uh, with various um, ways, uh, by constantly reviewing alerts received and handled, by the uniformization of incident treatment, by uh, doing a first level transversal analysis with comparing uh, and merging alert incidents, which is uh, uh, of great value for all the teams in the incident response uh, chain. And they also suggest uh, actions like prioritization, escalation within the incident response chain. And so this job, which not existed before, um, enables really interesting things for uh, South France. As a matter of fact, regulators have a central vision of operational activities, and they can give uh, at any given time a vision of the search resources engaged in incident response activities and also produce the trends. And so this central vision really gives them um, um, a hand to uh, support decision making for uh, the head of incident response division and globally South France uh, uh, leaders. And second of all, not only do they have a central vision, but they also have a full operational picture thanks to its position with the incident response chain. And so as such, um, it is the most capable of identifying and alerting of emerging trends or in risking coming incidents. Um, and so this, um, the reason why these two missions were created together is because, well, they are complementary and uh, basically a uh, situation awareness analysts and regulators work on a daily basis. And I let Lena tell you a little bit more about that. Um... So, so as I presented to you what operational activities regulation is, uh, for, the, for the rest of today, we're, we're going to mostly focus on what operational awareness does. But it's important to keep in mind that both missions, even though they are very different, um, they complement each other uh, very well. Uh, what makes them different? Well, situation awareness analysts are working on incidents. Uh, and they are actually part of the incident response chain, whereas uh, operational activities regulators uh, are controlling and supervising the incident response chain, make sure, ensuring that everything runs smoothly. And mostly they work on how incidents uh, are handled. So both uh, activities are quite complement, uh, complementary to, to each other uh, in that, uh, that way. Just now, a little focus on human resources needed in order to accomplish the mission deprived. So, as you understand, uh, the amount of uh, work behind the mission described earlier really depends on the impact, uh, but also the volume of incidents notified and handled at South France. Um, so, let's just take a, a, a look at the volume for year 
2020, for instance. So these are the numbers uh, you can find in the annual report of, uh, and, and you have the link on the slide. Um, Lina will um, tell you a little bit more about uh, these notions and what they stand for, for what do we understand by major incidents, comparison with incidents or cyber defense operation. Um, just after, but what is interesting here is to see that there is a certain and ever growing amount uh, of security events handled at South France. And so we estimate that in order to tackle the missions we have, uh, it requires six uh, situation analysts and two or three regulations analysts. Um, as for the, the profile needed to fill this different uh, position, uh, well, they are quite hybrid. Uh, are needed people who can understand and analyze a very complex and diverse situation and its technical details uh, in a very short time. But generally, people with uh, business intelligence or political science background uh, or and or engineering uh, and a strong understanding of the cybersecurity uh, elements uh, are needed. Um, Naturally, this pool of candidates is more gender balanced than pure engineering posts, uh, which is well something quite rare within the cybersecurity field and thus uh, noteworthy. Uh, thank you. So now that you understand where we come from, uh, we're going to try to talk a, a little bit more about uh, what we do on a daily basis, uh, what it actually means to have a situation awareness. Um, integrated to a third. Uh, but before we go into detail, I want to come back to uh, what uh, Esther told you about uh, a little bit, what we call at third France our treatment mode. Um, in fact, incident response is organized in two types of treatment modes according to the nature of, it, of the incidents based on the, the sensitivity surrounding the victim, uh, but also the level of uh, impact the event has on the information system that is affected. And uh, we talk uh, for the, the, the cyber defense operations, which are usually the incidents with on the larger scale. Uh, what is created is a specific team to which a situation awareness analyst is integrated uh, specifically. For the, the rest of the treatment modes, uh, alleged incidents and major incidents, uh, well, they are treated by the what, classical, I want to say, uh, incident response chain with uh, uh, an escalation process that is um, put into place when and if uh, necessary. And situation awareness has also a different role uh, for that uh, within that uh, incident response. Uh, well, I'll start by telling you about what we do in cyber defense operations. And after, we'll tell you, tell you a little bit more about what we do uh, for the rest of incident response. First, cyber defense operations. Well, uh, as I mentioned, for this type of events, uh, a specific team is created within a third friend, overseen by a team leader, a uh, cyber defense operation manager, uh, who operates a matrix management. Uh, that team um, is composed of different experts, such as a forensic coordinator, a CTA specialist, for instance, but also a situation awareness analyst, whose job in that context is to produce two types of deliverables. First of all, uh, we produce uh, regular situation analysis reports that are disseminated among operational and management teams within third France. And given the evolution of the incident, uh, these reports are produced uh, between once a day to once every few weeks. Uh, secondly, we also produce a specific situation analysis reports um, on demand on or when relevant uh, that can be shared outside of third friends uh, towards more uh, political authorities or towards partners, international, both international and national. Uh, and sometimes towards our constituents themselves. Uh, Esther will tell you a little bit more about uh, what those reports look like. Look like, but what's uh, important to, to understand is that they are quite thorough and they try to cover uh, 
a large section of topic as large as possible, uh, meaning, uh, and they contain forensic results, uh, investigation on the attackers' infrastructures and motives, recovery efforts, uh, relationship with the constituent, and some partners or third parties if they are some, uh, risk analysis, etc. And the goal is with all of that to still give a synthetic picture of the incident and its treatment within Earth France, uh, while giving a broad understanding of the technical elements. So that's what we try to do for cyber defense operations. Um, okay, so besides cyber defense operation, um, situation awareness is involved in the incident response chain from alerts to major incidents. Uh, and so these events, which represent the large majority of what is handled by South France, go up to the incident response chain after a classic. Um, there, the situation awareness team is mobilized to give a synthetic uh, picture of the whole incident response uh, activities of South France, uh, analyzing ongoing trends and point out uh, emerging ones. For this mission, situation awareness uh, works closely with operational activity regulation. So, as we mentioned earlier, we are very complementary. Uh, for this mission, we also use, uh, for instance, a matrix uh, as a specific tool, uh, as you can see on the bottom right hand side of the slide. And this matrix uh, represents the volume of security events depending on the uh, 1x victimology and on the other one the level of impact uh, on the information system targeted. Um, and this tool is very useful for us to have a visual and global picture of what has been going on. Uh, it's very easy to compare uh, one situation on different time frames. For instance, if you want to see what entities have been impacted by a given type of attack, like ransomware, it's easy to see what like as a pattern for year 2020 and year 2019. Um, moreover, in collaboration with operational regulation, situation awareness is in charge of producing statistics and indicators related to incident response activities. And finally, similar situation analysis reports as the one produced um, for cyber defense operation uh, can be produced uh, for incidents when relevant and major incidents uh, quite systematically. Uh, so now I'm going to show you what uh, situation reports look like. Um, it's an example. Uh, of course, we cannot show you a full situation analysis report. Um, so this example contains fake text and fake people examples. Um, what is key here to, to remember is that situation analysis reports uh, are usually to be read by people in charge, management team, in order to for their decision making. Uh, in our case, uh, as Lena told you, anti leaders, authorities sometimes. Thus, uh, in a nutshell, people who don't have much time to read. So it is paramount that situation reports uh, are built a way readers can access easily and quickly in a glance, uh, key information for decision making. And so in uh, this example, so on the left page on the slide, you can see key information such as what are we talking about? What type of incident is it? What uh, entity uh, is uh, targeted? What are the stakeholders? What is the level of risk associated with this incident? Uh, you can also have information uh, very quickly of uh, where are we in terms of investigation, are we engaging action um, in uh, uh, remediation actions or not. Of course, you have an executive summary of what has been going on. You have what is new about the uh, situation, um, the operational situation. You have a list of appendix, etc. Of course, uh, between these two pages, the uh, one on the left and the right, well, you have others with details, uh, but it's best to um, On the right page, so you have different examples of visual elements produced, like timelines, like uh, diagrams. It can be a timeline of the attack, what we understood about the attack. It can be a timeline about the cyber, uh, the cyber operation itself. 
uh, but basically uh, everything is done so that the readers have uh, very easy, easy accessible information uh, make decision or just to, to know where to go in terms of investigation. Um, this slide here um, is about um, giving you an overview, a summary of what we discussed uh, just, uh, before. Basically, you have uh, so the treatment mode uh, that Lena presented to you, and on the right, you have the different uh, uh, situation uh, missions uh, that situation, uh, analysts uh, are doing. So you can see uh, there is the report, uh, you have statistics, the trends, and the regular operational picture uh, that is a mission itself of personal awareness. So you've seen that situation awareness is part of uh, the whole incident response uh, chain. Um, but uh, actually, with those missions, uh, situation awareness holds the most uh, cross level vision of incident response uh, activities in, in France uh, with operational activity regulation as well. So, what does it do in the uh, fact well, it's a fundamental help for decision making for prioritization and it allows it allows for a management of the information that we share towards uh, partner or authorities however it's important to keep in mind that situation awareness is not uh, reporting or information management because in fact it requires to be able to understand and analyze complex technical investigation uh, to take into account the context, the, the stakes, the risks, all of it in a very short time uh, in order to deliver an analysis uh, of the operational situation that, will, that is tailored towards the recipients. And those recipients can be uh, the operational team, for instance, if, if a new uh, technical expert arrives on the incident response, specific incident response, well, um, those reports can help them understand what they're getting to. Uh, it's also, those recipients can be our management that will use them for decision making and prioritization or uh, political authorities that will use them for uh, more strategic, uh, let's say, uh, decision making. So the most difficult part is to tailor the, the, the deliverable to the, the recipients. Uh, all right, and so last but not least, we're going to tell you a little bit more about uh, how we, what are the challenges we face in order to get a fully integrated. Uh, so as for the challenges, uh, so when the team was created, of course, challenges arose, uh, which are mission related challenges, of course, but also human resources challenges. Uh, so besides finding the right place for the situation awareness analysts uh, who are non-technical experts, uh, we have, as we mentioned earlier, uh, so uh, finding the place for them among an incident response team, one of the core challenges uh, that mission entails was and remains finding the right amount of uh, technical details to include in the deliverable and how to include them. Uh, indeed, this, uh, this deliverable must be precise and concise so that the trans uh, leaders can exploit them for decision making. They also need to give a comprehensive and thorough vision so that incident response teams can exploit them in order to uh, keep up with how incidents are progressing and come up with appropriate postures for the treatment uh, to present. Um, as for the human uh, resources challenges, uh, we I talked about, uh, about that a little earlier. Uh, basically, the new challenge we face is um, how to handle the ever growing amount of solicitations, uh, which are the price uh, of success, I guess, uh, of how the, the team has uh, proven itself uh, very useful or indis indispensable. Uh, and of course, there is the challenge about recruiting hybrid and rare profiles as I described to you. And now Lena will tell you a bit more about the threshold that to face. Yes, um, we wanted to finish on that first 
on that uh, particular part because, um, as a matter of fact, it takes time to build it in that old, such specific uh, mission, such a new mission. And there were specific uh, events or thresholds, uh, we can call them that, that played a significant role in demonstrating how useful the team was for the whole instant response uh, activity. And here are two examples that, that can highlight by that point. Uh, starting with uh, 2019, when Third Front was facing particularly complex incidents. And at the time, the situation awareness team was getting bigger. Three minutes left. Thank you. Uh, the situation awareness team was getting uh, bigger. So situation uh, an awareness analyst could uh, prove how useful they could be in that context. Uh, because facing such complexity, um, well, it turned out that having an analyst that is specifically dedicated to making things clear for everyone, uh, from analyst to management, uh, is quite precious, especially because it allows um, for uh, incident handlers or forensic coordinators to focus on the core of their work um, and organizing and treatment and managing the relationship with the constituents and everything without worrying uh, about the fact that their management uh, have a clear picture of what's happening. Uh, the second threshold is the pandemic, because as a lot of uh, you, I guess, we were able to work partly from home um, due to the, the lockdown. And at that particular time, a situation awareness and uh, as well as uh, operational activities regulation were key for ensuring that there was a continuity in operational activities uh, because they were instrumental for other incident response teams to keep up with the whole um, uh, operational activity and the whole picture uh, to, yes, to have a clear picture of all of it. It was also uh, key at the time uh, for fulfilling an increased need uh, and increased demand for reporting and anal analyzing uh, incidents that specifically targeting the healthcare sector, uh, which became uh, a top one priority for, for everyone at, at the time. So uh, that's why uh, that's two examples of when uh, the creation and awareness uh, team became uh, uh, quite, uh, quite important. Uh, prove their, their, their value. Um, actually, that's it for us. Um, we remain available if you have questions. And thank you a lot for listening and watching uh, our presentation.